Ever wanted to learn how to cast magic spells, perhaps in a classroom setting? Well, this mod has you covered. I'm Headmaster Valen, and this is Schools of Magic Second Semester. In case you're confused, this mod more or less just adds in a way of casting magical spells with a wand, and it also adds in a few just nice mechanics like tea brewing and some uh, a little bit of uh, so, some some special effects you can get from that in the process. So in order to become a new student of the School of Magic, you will first need to prove that you can handle yourself in the world out and around. You're going to want to look for one of these, a mysterious letter. It'll drop when you defeat any number of foes, primarily those that cast magic, evokers, illusioners, and witches. Inside this letter is your key to starting the mod. It's any number of different kinds of quests that you might have inside. It explains here how things are going. You can then grab the extra quest paper here. By opening it up, you'll have any number of different types of quests, whether it be brewing or golem making and so on. You can actually start multiples. As long as you complete one of them, you should be good. Here's another to receive the basic arcana, build and animate a golem, which you could easily do with a couple snow blocks and a pumpkin. But in this case, let's just keep it simple and go with a brewing quest. This way I don't need to clean up after a snow golem. All I need to do is click start quest here and it has begun. Then I can proceed with making myself some kind of potion and hopefully completing this quest. There we go, one potion of night vision and it should be completed. And you can see here it says claim reward. To receive the basic arcana, brew a potion in a brewing stand complete. It then transforms that letter into the basic arcana, which is your instruction book on how to begin, as well as how you can activate spells on a magical wand. Because you could feasibly have made a magic wand before, you just wouldn't be able to use it. And over here I have the beginnings of how you can start with that. With your basic arcana, you open it up and it is a basic instruction manual that can be displayed if you notice over here on the left. We'll get into that in a moment. Right now just know that you can still just page to the right. It's all sequential. You don't have to worry about skipping around to different chapters or something like that. If you want to go through the whole book, just page to the right and you can go through the whole book. Otherwise, just use the double arrows to get all the way to one end or the other and X to close out from the book or escape. Upon opening it up, you can always go over tea brewing and tea effects. We'll cover those shortly. Let's get into making some of the more basic things like spells. I click on the first spell here and you can see there's blaze, fuel furnace, sun dry, and so on. It keeps going on. There are a lot of spells to choose from. You can actually store multiple spells on a wand, but you also need to know how to recognize how these all work. So first, let's make a wand. An apprentice wand is made with a diamond, a gold ingot, and a stick. You can then upgrade it as you desire in a smithing table to give it extra spell slots. You can actually only hold one spell slot at a time in your apprentice wand that's a starter one. If you notice here when I press the H key, which is the default for this, at the top it displays a single spell slot that I can cast. I have no spells memorized right now, so it is empty. Now by upgrading this wand with a diamond and then taking that one and upgrading it with a diamond and taking that one and upgrading it with a diamond, I can then get up to four slots with this one, as you notice here. And you can scroll through them just by using your mouse wheel to go one direction or the other. This allows you a variety of up to four spells on one wand. Now if you only upgrade at one level, you're going to be getting two spell slots. Upgrading it again will get you three, and of course the final one will get you the four spell slots you see here. If you want to actually put a spell on one of these, you'll have to pick it in your basic arcana, and then you'll need to place it on one of these, a podium. It doesn't have to be a mossy cobblestone version. There are multiples of them. As you can see here, there's quite a variety to choose from, and they're all pretty basic uh, items. You just need a stone cutter, and you can put a, the appropriate stone type in there, and you can make a podium from it. And it will display items uh, appropriately, like you see here. Then you can just sneak right click to take it back out. If you put a basic arcana in there, like that book there, it will display the book page that you were looking at. If you want to change pages while it's on here, you can actually do so and interact, but you have to aim at the podium itself. Aiming at the book won't do anything, but if I aim at the podium and right click, it will turn the page to the right while I'm on the right side of the block. 
I aim to the left, it will change it to the left page. It's pretty cool. It's not quite as fast as if you were to actually take the book out and just click a bunch of times to go left or right, but it's very pretty and I, I just like it a lot for how immersive it is. But know that it has to be on a podium for you to actually assign a spell to your wand. In this case, let's choose Blaze. Now if I right click with this, it will just change the page. So you're going to want to make sure that you are sneak right clicking on the top of the podium and you now see at the bottom left there I have Blaze as a spell that I can cast. Now when I hold the H key, you can see in the top right there it says the number one. That's your spell level that you currently are. You can actually get that up quite high, but know that on the left you have kind of a spell reservoir and two spell slots. Each spell slot may allow you multiple castings of any given spell, and your reservoir is just it filling up before the next pip will replenish. To give an example, let's aim up here and I'm going to shoot a fireball at this wall. Now because it's just a wall, nothing's going to happen to it. If I were to aim it on the ground here, there's a chance it might light things on fire, including entities, do damage, and so on. But if you look on the left, it used up one of the pips of my magic and it is slowly replenishing. If you look to the right of the icon of that fireball, you'll see it says two. That means I have two more casts left in this pip before I use it up and have to go into the next one. So if I cast it once and twice, it's done. If I cast it another time, it then starts going into the next spell pip that I have available there. And of course, I can just keep doing this until it wears out. And then I'm completely depleted. And the more I cast this stuff, if I press H again, you can see that there's a whole bunch of arrows on the right. The more I cast, the more XP experience I gain and level up. So you're going to want to choose some spells that are going to be quite useful to you at the start uh, and probably throughout most of it just so that you can spam them to try and get the XP in order to level yourself up. Now Blaze, while useful, can be quite dangerous because, like I said, it sets things on fire. So let's go with something else a little bit more useful. Fuel Furnace. If I sneak right click on here, I can then use it to actually light a furnace to work without any fuel in it. You see there's nothing here. If I sneak right click, it will then light the furnace up with a short term cooking animation and it will actually cook something through for a bit. And you can uh, stack it by just sneak right clicking a bunch of times and it will just keep using it uh, as many times as you've like right clicked. It will stack those effects so it will uh, not just do like one or two cooking uh, actions, it will actually do uh, double that because I've just clicked on it twice. Now why is this useful? Well, I'm going to tell you how you can actually make yourself some other immersive items in here while you're currently trying to level up on all the different things. Uh, I will give you a few uh, spells here that are going to be really good for you that you can start off with. Fuel Furnace is obviously one of them because you can use it to just cook about anything without any uh, cost in it and it's just as fast as it replenishes, you can use it. And you'll notice all these little like uh, options here, these little like symbols, and they, they can be a bit confusing as to what they represent. If we go with something like Fuel Furnace here, you'll notice it's got all of these symbols. And if you look very closely, the one that my, uh, my crosshairs are on has a single dot. The one that's next to it is green and it has two dots. Then the yellow one here has three dots, four, five, six, and so on, all the way up to nine. If I look at a spell like Zephyr, this spell, it actually gives a description on the right, says that it more or less allows you to fly, but it requires at least a level two spell in order for you to be able to use it. So if you try using some spell that you don't have access to yet, and you can find that out just by holding a wand and pressing H, then you'll know, oh, okay, well, it looks like I only have a level one spell because that's the blue one on the left there. Let me go back to the Fuel Furnace spell and you'll notice it has a little blue circle. That's the same as the circle on the left side here with those two pips. And if I level myself up enough, let's just do this and a couple more times. And I think I might have enough. Yep, I am now level two, but that doesn't necessarily mean that I am going to get a level two spell. I'm level two. I don't get level two spells until I think level three, so it might be a little bit before you can see some of those things. 
Real quickly, let's cover how you can actually get multiple spells. Uh, if you notice here, this uh, I, I said before you can just bring up this menu by pressing H, and then you use your mouse wheel to scroll. Well, if I choose another spell, like growth, this is an excellent one for getting yourself some crops or food or whatever you need real quick. Just sneak right click again, and I now have a new spell. Pressing H, I can scroll again and store another spell. The growth spell effectively is just like bone mealing something. So that's pretty basic and a really good one. It says it works in a three by three area, but currently uh, the version that I'm playing in, it only affects a one block, but I find that to be quite effective as it is. A very simple and basic one that you could probably use to level up quite effectively is also snowball. It doesn't do any damage. And if you sneak right click, you then can have this. You can just throw a bunch of snowballs until you are effectively done casting your spell. So if you don't have a furnace or, or food nearby, you can still use it. And yes, it does still do damage to things like blazes. Now, a spell like Rumor is rather complex and works better with higher level spells. But if you look on this page here, it explains first level spell, the creatures that you'll want to be affecting will have to have eight health or less, which is four hearts. And then second is eight hearts or less, third is 16 hearts or less, and so on. And it will only work on aggressive mobs that are not bosses. And what this allows you to do is basically have one mob attack another mob. And you'll have to sneak right click on one mob and then sneak right click on another mob. Meanwhile, they're trying to attack you and so on. And they instead will probably attack each other at least in most cases. It's a pretty interesting one, but one that I found to be a little bit difficult to try and execute without taking some serious hurt. One that's really going to be useful for when you're going spelunking is going to be healing. This one here is almost always on my spell uh, spell list uh, because it just fixes you from taking a lot of damage. As you can see here, I currently am missing four hearts of my 20 hearts that I have. Yes, I'm playing a mod pack. It's called Little Magistics, and there are multiple other mods in here. Uh, that you're seeing as well as shaders being used but that aside with the healing spell in mind just casting it it will give you a couple uses here and there enough that you can top yourself up there we go and the fast forward spell this one here as it does explain is actually going to be a bit better with higher levels because you can just maintain it so much longer but it also will be just as useful you can combine it with the uh, the fuel the furnace spell so for example, if I sneak right click here and then I go to fuel furnace and I have some potatoes. Let's put a stack of potatoes in there. If I go over to this and I start fueling my furnace, then I switch over to fast forward and I just sneak and hold the right click button. It will cook faster as long as I have mana. You saw that little bar in the bottom left just disappear. And it instantly has already made two baked potatoes pretty darn fast. And if someone else is accessing the furnace, they'll see the actual furnace increase in speed. But you'll notice here, oh, that furnace effect that I had has worn off. It's incredibly useful, like I said, at higher levels because you can maintain it for much longer periods and can be used for probably just increasing the speed of basic machines like furnaces. And sometimes you could even use some other mods as well. Here's the other thing you should know is that even if you have other wands on you, it's not going to change the amount that you have in reserve. Uh, now, I may have the same spell on one as I have on another, but it does actually mean that your spells are still going to be replenishing at a slower rate. You know, it, it, it's all dependent on your mana. It's not the wand's mana. So that that is a thing. Okay, so now let's go back to a little heliomancy here, and we'll we'll cover sun dry. This one here is going to be useful for tea, and tea is actually useful for many different kinds of effects, depending upon how you want to brew stuff. If you're using your book here, you can find out a little bit of information about the tea brewing process. But first, you're going to need to know how to actually make a proper cup, and I don't mean a cuppa. I'm talking about the cup itself as well as the teapot, because those are kind of important for you to actually use these. You're first going to need to make a mortar, whether it be andesite, granite, or diorite is up to you, but either way you just take three of those and a stick and you now have a mortar. Opening that up, you'll want to put some kind of product in there. In this case, I'm putting white terracotta. 
by clicking up in this area where the little pestle is, it then will grind it up into a white clay powder. Taking a bucket of water and some of this white clay powder, I can then make white clay. This can then be used to make the different dishes or items. Uh, we currently have white clay's teapots, which are made from white clay. As you see here, just kind of a V pattern. Then you smelt it into a white terracotta teapot, and you smelt it again into a white glaze teapot as you desire. It doesn't have to be either one, they both should work. And there's multiple different versions you can have. It doesn't have to be the white style, but I do prefer these ones as just a good default. Once you place one of these down, it will actually display in the world as you see here in a 3D render. Same thing with cups on top of saucers. You can make those in a similar fashion with a similar recipe. But once you open the teapot, it's a little bit confusing with how things actually work. To get there, we're still going to have to do a few more things because we need a little bit more ingredients to put in here for this to work properly. So having been able to make several of these potteries, we now need to know how to actually put things in them and use them to our advantage. Using things like poppies, cornflowers, alliums, dandelions, lily of the valley, and blue orchids, you of course can turn them into the different dyes, but you can also double them in your mortar and pestle, as well as sugarcane can get you some more sugar this way as well, so it's a good mechanic to just increase your output at the very least. But you're going to want to make something like this, herbal twine. It's just made from some grass and some string out in the world, and using it, you can place it on surfaces above you. And what it will allow you to do is dry these different flowers, so for now I'm grabbing cornflower, poppies, alliums, and dandelions, just because that's what I placed up here. And you'll see that they just invert the texture. It's now hanging upside down instead of being uh, from the ground up. I am using a resource pack in here, so the flowers may look different from your regular vanilla. Now over time, these will dry by themselves, but instead you could also speed that up with some sun dry. This will definitely speed things up, but you're going to want to, uh, well, you're going to want, want to make sure that you're sneaking or else you're going to right click and just take the flower off of the uh, the string. But if you sneak right click and cast, it then instantly dry these, dries these flowers into their dried versions. Grabbing these, you can see that they look a little bit different. They've got all the different versions here. And then you're going to want to put them in a mortar and pestle and, of course, grind them up into some crushed versions. And just be sure that they are the dried variants. You cannot do this with the raw ones. And you'll get all these different things here. Poppy seeds, crushed cornflowers, crushed allium, crushed dandelion, and crushed lily of the valley, as well as crushed blue orchids. Taking your teapot by actually breaking it from the surface you may have laid it on, you can then place it on top of something that's currently hot, like a furnace, for example. It will then give it the heat that it needs in order to make tea. Adding water on the top right here will actually fill up the tea kettle with water, but then you have three different options for how to make some tea. Any of those crushed variants you can put in there, minus the white clay, we don't need that, can have different effects on the drinker of this tea. Putting those in, you can actually du duplicate the same exact ones and so on. And there we go, we now have a full pot of tea. Let me grab a cup. If I sneak right click, I can grab that off of there. I have five in my inventory right now. And as before, you just put them over here and it will drain them out. There we go, three cups from one bucket of water. And if you hold shift, you can inspect this. You get fire resistance for 30 seconds, saturation and hunger for 20 seconds, jump boost for 30 seconds, and tier two effect of haste for 30 seconds. This is just from drinking one of these cups of tea. And it's drinkable even if your hunger meter is already full, doesn't really matter, but they also stack if they're of the same type of tea. If you have a different tea mixture in here, then that would be different. Sometimes mixing and matching the different effects can be useful. It's up to you guys to figure out which one it is for uh, each of you, which one of those ground up items will give you different effects and so on. And if you want to double up or stack them, you can. There are some other things you can make like poppy seed muffins with sugar, poppy seeds, eggs, and wheat. Pretty good and tasty, but they can also just be a really nice decorative item to add on to a little bit of a saucer. As you can see, I've been leveling up, and upon reaching level 5, I'm able to cast level 2 spells now. 
Uh, my level one spell is currently recharging. With level two, I can have I now have access to a few extra abilities that I didn't have before. Namely, my favorite one, Zephyr. This gives you a brief uh, kind of creative style flight, but you fly in the direction you're looking while holding right click down with your mouse. So if I wanted to go up and around, I can, and I have limited flight options while doing this. I definitely don't want to wear out my uh, meter down there on the bottom left before uh, getting close to the ground or else, well, it, it'll it'll run out and I will kind of fall to my death, perhaps. Uh, it, it is a possibility, <laughs> but uh, it's one of my favorite and most useful spells. It will replenish over time, but only once you've accomplished at least level five and you can start casting your tier two spells. There are other spells that are really lovely and available to you at tier two as well, and one of which is Shulker Bullet, which is absolutely fantastic, but don't rely upon it too heavily. I have a spider here I'm going to spawn in and then try and target with this. It helps if I actually choose the spell appropriately, but then I will launch a Shulker Bullet at the target, then doing a little bit of damage and making it float, potentially making it take a lot of damage. But it does take a bit more mana in order to cast this than usual. This next tier two spell, Summon Bees, is actually just about as fun as the previous one. You just need a target and then sneak right click it with your spell, provided it doesn't escape underneath a table. Let's try that again. And a bee will then attack it and poison it if appropriate to do so. But these bees are very short lived and they will just disappear after a short time. So let's get on to a bit more advanced magic. And I don't just mean this magic spell and others, but it's more or less going to be the access that you have. I've been casting for quite a while now, and you can see that I'm level 30. With this in mind, know that I now have access to a lot of different tiers, eight to be exact. This doesn't mean that this is the limit. There is actually nine and you can <laughs> cast even more stuff with it. But to give you an example, let me actually go to something a little bit more practical. You can see here Snowball is a level one spell. Just by starting to cast it, I get nine uses out of this one level one or tier one spell slot and down to zero. Now, if I were to switch that out to a different tier by holding H and then also pressing shift or sneak and then using the mouse wheel as opposed to before, just using the mouse wheel will change the, uh, the spell that you're using. If you hold sneak while doing it, it also changes the level that you cast it at. So if I go up to, let's say, level six and I start shooting a snowball, you can see I now have 59 uses of this one spell slot before it runs out. So this is something to keep in mind is that you can sometimes cast a more powerful spell, other ones you just get more uses out of it. And for this, I have a little bit of a volunteer with the Fang Mangle spell, which is level three or higher. By putting down some chickens here, you can then eat them all with one spell casting. Or even if they're underneath the table, you can still try to get them, but you notice that it actually followed the contour of the land. To give a better example, I cast over here and you can see it went up that hill. So there are limitations to this, but it definitely works really well for casting to attack enemies in a line. Though, as you notice, it is a little bit hitbox specific. So it's there is a chance that your uh, enemies or foes or targets even could just wander a little bit away from it. This next spell here is also level three and above, and it is invisibility. This one grants you a limitation in a way of invisibleness. Uh, just to give an example, note that I am wearing some uh, armor and uh, such from another mod. And when I cast this spell, besides the wonderfully cheeky sound that it ends up making, it will make you invisible, but not the things that you're holding onto or your armor. So you will have to um, disrobe in order to be truly invisible, though be aware you will still give off those little particle effects around you. And it's for a limited time. Translocation is a level four or above spell. This is actually one of my favorites to use as it's an excellent counter to many of the other spells by quickly tra trading places with uh, a target spellcaster, perhaps another player or something like that, or just an enemy. To give an example, here's a chicken and I can trade places with it, trade it again. And if the chicken gets under the table, well, 
Only if I can actually get a line of sight to target it am I able to teleport that critter out of there, and then I could potentially use other spells to finish it off. It's also an excellent spell for just trading places when falling or if you're about to fall. Any kind of you're about to take some kind of damage or anything like that, it's a great spell to use on another entity. And this last one here, Thunderstroke, is a very effective, if not very loud, spell that you can also use. Here's some chickens, and yeah, it, it will basically generate lightning, but you're going to want to be careful if you target something like a creeper with this. It could have bad side effects, though you could also create a charge creeper, then trade places and uh, surprise your friends. All that being said, it's a fantastic mod, and there's actually more in here than you might have seen in this bit by bit so far, including lots of different woods and some different uh, types of spells, like uh, different uh, areas that they affect or are affected by. Not everything has been for ported forward from the older versions, and not all of it is uh, necessarily work in progress. At least we get to play a little bit with what this mod has to offer. So if you enjoyed this video and would like to see more like it, please be sure to give a like, comment, subscribe, and as always, be sure to stop by on Twitch and visit us there, where you have no idea what kind of strangeness might happen. So until next time, I'll see ya. Oops. <laughs>